How are you guys doing? So it's been a little bit since I had a chance to solve or do a problem on the board. Sorry, that's the way life gets sometimes. But I was teaching a class this weekend and I had a private tutor session and uh, this question came up in the session and I did it a different way that I had previously never done it when I was explaining the problem. And I wanted to cover that method with you now. It's amazing the things you discover when you do problems multiple times. So I, I encourage you heavily when you're preparing for the test, we've got about 10 weeks to go now until the November tests, uh, try to solve some problems a second time. Revisit them, especially if you suspected there was a faster way. So, and I'm gonna explain this one here. Write what it is you are looking for. What does it mean? Well, we'll see. 2004 AMC 10A problem 20. Points E and F are located on square A, B, C, D, so that triangle B, E, F is equilateral. What is the ratio of the area of triangle D, E, F to that of triangle A, B, E? The first thing you're gonna notice is there's no lengths. And when there's no lengths, a lot of times we go, oh, I, how am I gonna, uh, and we kind of panic a little bit, but you probably shouldn't. In fact, ratios give us something we can do. You can usually pick one of the values you wanna work with as one. And in fact, you could put one here, here, or here, and all three of them are gonna play some kind of a beneficial role. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and put my one here. So the side of the square is one. And then I'm gonna call, let me make that a little bit nicer looking one, I guess. Can't really read it. Okay, I'm gonna call EA X because this side's one. And if the whole thing is one and this is X, this will be one minus X. And I think that's one minus X, but how do I know? Well, we know this is an equilateral triangle. So this side equals this side. And we know this is 90. So we have hypotenuse and hypotenuse equal. And we know this side is one. Now we have HL. HL theorem says these two triangles are congruent, so this angle equals this angle, and these are both 60, therefore these two angles are equal, and since this is 90, that's a 45, 45, 90. Okay, now, now is when you wanna do what we said. Keep in mind what you're trying to find as you're doing the mechanical operations. Sometimes there'll be an opportunity to have a shortcut. And we'll see that here. So the area of DEF, that's this triangle here, it's half base times height. And our base and height are the legs, and it's one minus X squared. I could put the half in front, but I'm not going to. Why? Because I have another triangle, and it also has a half base times height, and there's no need to write it because you're gonna cancel it when you do the ratio, ratio written as a fraction. So base times height in either order is X, the one halves that would have been in front cancel. No need to worry about them. This is what you're looking for. Write it down in your paper somewhere and then continue to solve the problem and see how it might be solved. Let's continue. We know by Pythagorean that this length is the square root of x squared plus one. And we know that this length over here by 45, 45, 90 properties is one minus x root two. So I know because this is equilateral that these two are equal, right? Everything's a progression. You just keep finding new things that justify your next step. So you're gonna write one minus X root two equals X squared plus one. And so usually when I solve this problem, I solve it for X. But this weekend when I was teaching Lee, shout out to Lee there, um, I went over this right here and I thought, look at this one minus X and look at that. And I got square roots and I don't like them. What if I square both sides? We're gonna have to square both sides in either solution method. But if I do so, I'm gonna generate that, which makes me think maybe there's a way I can solve this without ever finding X. And in fact, there is, let's see it. So one minus X quantity squared times two is equal to X squared plus one. How though? How are we going to get what we want? We need to like divide by X and I don't see how I'm gonna get, I, I don't see it. Okay, well, something I learned from volume one, and probably it's in the algebra book as well, but uh, volume one has it pretty extensively in one of the early chapters where you'll do something like this, is that you can add and subtract the same value. For instance, if I subtract 2x plus one and then I add 2x, so I subtract 2x and add 2x, that doesn't actually change the value. But what it does do is it allows me to write this in this way with parentheses. 
And now I can factor this as x minus 1 squared. And you might not know it, and you should. This would be a small notebook concept. Uh, if you have a minus b squared, it's equal to b minus a squared. Verify it for yourself. Okay, that means these two things are in fact equal even though they're reversed. So all I'm going to do is move this right over here to this one by subtracting it. That's going to give me 1 times uh, 1 minus x squared equals 2x. Well, there's the x I wanted right there. So I just divide by the x right here, and we're done. Answer's 2. So that's kind of the fast way that you can get to it. Notice we never found the value of x. Instead, we used the basic principle from problem solving, write what you're looking for, and maybe it will materialize. Okay, so how would you do it if you didn't notice that? I mean, it's just algebra. You would solve for x, but let's see what that path looks like so we understand how much time this saves to do it this way. So if I went back to uh, this point in the problem right here, right? Let's say you didn't catch that and you've got x squared plus 1. It's not that much different, but it's not as cool. Um, anyhow, we're going to expand this. We're going to get 2 times 1 minus 2x plus x squared, and then equals x squared plus 1. We'll distribute, I'm going to write it over here, 2 minus 4x plus 2x squared equals x squared plus 1. You should suspect that we're factoring or doing quadratic formula or something like that. So I'm going to move x squared to the side where it's positive. You should have that instinct. Keep the a value of x squared positive, the leading co coefficient of your quadratic, if you will. So that's going to give you x squared after you subtract. Be careful with your subtraction. You're actually not adding. And you're going to have the minus 4x. It's unchanged. Subtracting 1 to give 1. Now I have this. Now if you look at it, you're not factoring that. And because you're not factoring it, we've got to do quadratic formula. Let's see what that looks like. That's going to be, um, let's see, negative b is 4, plus or minus, probably minus, um, just because its x is pretty small. So 4 minus uh, square root of b squared is 16 minus 4. a, c, a is 1, c is 1, so you're going to have 12. That's 4 minus, the square root of 12 is 2 root 3, all over 2a. There's a 2a here, I just oftentimes don't write it when I'm solving on my paper. So I'm not doing it now because I'm going to write it here over 2. That gives 2 minus 2 root 3. But if you notice, the 2 root 3 is bigger. <laughs> Some of you didn't actually notice things like that. Uh, root 3 is about 1.7 and 2 times 1.7 is 3.4. Um, so, oh, it's 2 minus root 3. Oops, my bad. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, so root 3 is smaller. Um, 2 minus root 3 then would be positive and we're okay. Um, but something's still not, no, it's okay. Yeah, 2 minus, this is about 1.7, 0 0.3 would go here. Now though, what have you done? You found the value of x. So you're going to have to plug it into here and now solve that, and you're still back to doing a bunch of extra work, a bunch of extra algebra. So if you're not doing this, right, you're going to end up spending probably at least a minute longer to a minute and a half, typically, than the student who does something like this, catches it, perceives it, and saves their time. So if I subtract x from here, 1 minus this, this, this expression would be positive root 3 minus 1. And that's the side length of the DEF triangle. So I've got that squared over. And then here, um, my area for this would be 2 minus root 3 times 1. Um, again, over 2, but I'm not going to write that. So it's just 2 minus root 3. Okay, then even that... That's your top area there, D, E, F, E, A, B, right here, A, B, E. Make sure no mistakes were made since I made one earlier. Uh, the half would have gone here and here, and it would have canceled, same thing. So when you do this, then you're going to get 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 1, and then you've got 4 minus 2 root 3 over 2 minus root 3. Factor out the 2 from the top, 2 times 2 minus root 3 over 2 minus root 3, cancel, cancel, and get 2. Easily an extra minute to 2 minutes, right? Or maybe not. Maybe not for, for these fast solvers, right, who don't make silly errors like this for a split second. Um, you might have been able to do it in 45 seconds to a minute. But those minutes, those seconds are crucial, especially as you get towards the end of the test. The pressure starts to go up. So use this principle. 
when you're doing a problem, write what it is you're looking for somewhere on your paper, just jot it down. You might be surprised and you might find it before you do all that algebra. See you guys in the next one.